Welcome to the six week yoga challenge with Tamara. This is week five of six. I have prepared a seated and supine practice for us today. 19 minutes. Let's begin with our ankles and our wrists. Rotating in both directions to warm them up. Then we interlace our hands in front of us and roll the hands away and then roll them back in rolling them away and rolling them in. So keep in mind today, hands are interlaced outward, that I want you to listen to your body. If anything I suggest doesn't feel good, please don't do it. Nothing should hurt. And you can always adapt the practice by choosing to do less or more in any pose and to modify. Arms sweep up, and then the hands come down into the heart. Interlace the hands inside out, they press away, and hands come back in. And then they rise, they just slide into a soft forward fold. Knees are in a micro bend. Coming back up, and we'll bring the right foot into the left inner thigh. This puts us into head to knee pose, Janu Shirshasana. And this is a soft entry. The arms just fall wherever and you round over the knee. And now we'll make this an upper body twist. So the right arm reaches forward and then back and you're allowing the torso inhale up to rotate back and forward. So choosing your own perfect pace and feeling the opening through the side body. And now the left hand comes over to the right knee for a twist, lengthen the spine and then look over the left shoulder. And from this position, starting a side bend. So letting that arm lift up and over the ear, down. Uh-huh. Just kind of going in and out of the side bend, exhaling as you reach, inhaling when you rise. Okay, and we'll windmill the left hand behind us, extending the right leg forward. We're in staff pose again. Arms rise up, and the hands come down to the heart, Anjali Mudra. Interlacing them inside out, lifting them up. Arms lower by the sides. Side bend, left arm over ear. And then right arm over ear. Both arms rise and the hands come down through the heart center. So now let's bring our left foot into the inner right thigh. Knee is bent out to the side. And just easing forward into head to knee pose to hold. Rising up with the left arm leading to the back space and then reaching forward. So it's the twist and then the fold just for a breath and a tap. Twist, reach. Continuing, you can go as fast as me or slower. <laughs> Letting the right hand now drift over to the left knee. Left hand is behind. We lengthen our spine upward into the twist, softening the shoulders, now looking over the right shoulder. Then that left arm rises up and over ear. So we're side bending over the right leg while still holding on to the left knee with the right hand. 
side bend. Coming out of the pose, letting the left leg go forward. And then just cross our legs. We come into Sukhasana, or an easy seated pose, where we can lean back and lift, practicing a seated cat and cow posture, Chakra Vakasana. And just be mindful that the sacrum is comfortable, that you're mostly leaning back onto the sitting bones. Exhaling back, inhaling when we lift the heart. All right, now forward folding. So the fingers extend out forward. With a gentle push through the fingertips, you can be grounding through the sitting bones and that'll feel nice in the low back. So now we're gonna take this out to the right side. The left hand is at the front of the mat. The right hand is reaching to the back, folding over the right knee. Over to the other side, right arm goes over to the left, the front of the mat, and the left arm is reaching toward the back, folding over the left knee. And release, bringing ourselves into upright, letting the knees bend and the feet to extend out in front of us, and we'll just lean forward and back into the wrist, the palms are facing up and the fingers are back. Just kind of getting the wrists ready for some weight bearing. So now flipping the hands over, deciding if you want fingers to point to the front of the mat, to the side or the back. All will feel different in your shoulders. And then we come into reverse tabletop, Jatushpada Bitam. And here I've decided I'd like to lift one leg at a time and make this more core work. So do what feels right for you. You could be holding table or just in the heart lift. Okay, soles of the feet come together. And now we're here in Buddha Konasana or butterfly pose. And just kind of using our fingers, our thumbs actually, to press into the soles of the feet. This is like a foot massage that encourages the hips to soften a little bit. And then we begin to rock. Inhale up, arms lengthen. Exhale, leading with the heart. Fold in. So this is for our hips. And now going a little bit more to the hips, our right hand will take the outer edge of the right foot. And we're just starting with a bent knee. You can hold even under the leg if necessary. And rotating toward the midline and then out to the side. So now, if it's possible, and you can straighten the leg, you could add that sensation, lifting the foot a little higher. And lifting the left arm off the ground gives you a little bit more too. I like to open and close. And now wherever you are, just holding the posture for a few breaths. And bring in the soles of the feet together again. But this time, we'll slide the feet forward so we can come into Kurmasana, or tortoise pose. This is a big stretch for the back. We allow our hands to rest on top of the feet and just round forward. If possible, allow there to be a lift from the low back and a leading forward with the heart. All right. So now we're going to release the right arm out and reach it up. So we're leaning toward our left leg and feeling a big opening in the side of the body. Making sure our neck is comfortable. And then we let the right arm dive back down again. Kurmasana, rounding forward. So 
So keeping the right arm where it is, the left arm now releases and reaches up at shoulder, hand over shoulder, unless that's a little too high, honor your range of motion. You're just kind of leaning back toward the right and feeling that opening on the left side of the body. And letting the hand go under so we can pull the feet in a little closer and you either keep your feet on the ground or take this chance to hold underneath the ankles and balance on the sitting bones. It was a variation of boat pose. So now bringing the left hand over to the left outer edge of the foot and starting with the bent knee, bringing the leg in to the center and then out to the left. And then you can see the progression here, lifting the right arm up if you'd like and sweeping both the leg and the arm in opposite directions. And then hold. Okay, bringing that down, letting the legs extend out in front. All right, so we lean forward, pressing down into the hands outside the hips. That was an engagement for the belly and the low back and puts us in a good tip forward position for forward fold, Uttanasana. Hold where you can, but be mindful of your shoulders that they remain low and away from your ears. Okay, rising back up to staff pose with a heart lift and an opportunity now to lift again. You can be in tabletop or I'm gonna be here in um, incline plank, Pravottanasana, and I'm showing the alternate leg lifts just to make it a little bit more core work challenging. You wanna keep the back of the head supported by looking straight up. Okay, hips forward, laying down on our back, we bring the right knee in for a hug and the left leg extends forward. And release the leg, arms stretch overhead, and then bring in the left knee in for a hug. You can hold behind the thigh also if you'd rather. And then letting the leg go, arms stretch overhead. Okay, we bend the left knee, scooch the hips to the left, and then having a flamingo twist, the right hand holds the thigh. Notice the knee may not come down to the ground, that's by design, because we're focused on our left shoulder grounding. If the knee can come down and the shoulders down, go for it. <laughs> All right, and letting that go, recentering the hips and the left leg goes. Right knee bends, we scooch the hips to the right, right foot onto left thigh, left hand, drawing the knee across into a flamingo twist with our focus being a grounding of now the right shoulder. You can have the arm lengthened by your ear or maybe even bring it out to T position or goal post. And release, recenter the hips. Both knees come to the chest now and both legs rise. We are on Supta Dandasana, our back lying staff pose. And what's happening here is that um, the fluid from the feet and the legs is lowering down through gravity. And to bide our time, we're rotating ankles, flexing, pointing. You also wanna press your low back into the ground so the abdominals are engaged and especially because we're now doing an abdominal exercise. Crisscrossing the legs on the way down and as the legs get lower, you'll lift your head and shoulders and reach the hands forward. As the legs cross back up, 
you allow your head and shoulders to lower. So again, crisscrossing, and as the legs get lower, head and shoulder rise. Uh huh. And then lowering the upper body as the legs lift. So we'll do this another time or two. You want to keep your low back pressed into the ground. If there's any discomfort here, don't let the legs lower as much. It gets more challenging the lower they go. You don't have to lift the head and shoulders either. And look, we moved on already. Hands are on the knees, and we're just kind of moving through the hips here. The knees open wide, and we go forward and back, and then they come together, and we go forward and back. All right. So feet are on the ground, and we let the knees out to the right. We're feeling a supine twist around the pelvis or the hips. So you're putting a little weight into the right side of the hip. Can be a nice release if it's tight. Doing the same now to the left side. Your hands can be anywhere. I'm resting them on my solar plexus. You could be T position, you know, whatever. And knees come back to center. All right, arms are by our sides and we roll up into either a slant or if you prefer a bridge by tucking the shoulders under and lifting the heart, do not move your neck. But if you do want to move something, extend one leg out and then put it down and then go to the other. This is once again, just a little bit of core work in a posture. Setu Bandhasana or bridge pose. All right, releasing the hips down and the knees come into the chest. Apanasana, our wind relieving pose. And then we rock a little bit from side to side. Okay, so bringing the knees to the outside of the ribs and the feet to face upward, we're coming into Ananda Balasana or the happy baby pose. You could hold just behind the thighs. You want to keep the tailbone down. I've showed here the peace toe grip and also holding outside the pinky edge of the feet. So you're just pulling down, grounding through the low back and hips. All right, releasing the feet down, extending the heels to the front of the mat releasing our arms by our sides and finding ourselves in a final relaxation posture, Shavasana. Take a deep inhale through the nose and let it out through an open mouth. And again, deep inhale. Exhale, open mouth. One more time, inhale deeply, let it go, feeling the back body getting softer, and then both knees bend, and we'll roll over to one side, this is baby pose, head just resting in our arm, and then we press on up to a seat. And that is it. Hands into our heart center and feeling gratitude for this week five of six of the six week yoga challenge with me, Tamara. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you for being here. See you next week. MindBodyNow.com. Bye.